How's it going? My name is Isabel Farmer, also known as Amiguri, and I'm a narrative designer and game writer for Serenity Forge. I also have two independently published games, a dozen or two student games, and I run a webfic series called The World Letters of Isaia. Isaia is a land of faded heroes, abyssal beasts, and little girls bearing the weight of the world. If you want to truly immerse yourself in a fantasy world, or if you're looking for the inspiration to build your own, Isaia has both grounded, realistic ecology and deep character studies in coping with grief and trauma. It has nine constructed languages, with probably more coming, geopolitics grounded in geography, a thematic argument against great man history, and angsty bisexual demons. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then please return to the teapot of this channel by subscribing! I'll be uploading on the 14th of every month from henceforth with in-depth explorations of my story worlds. With the rest of this video, I want to talk about how I got here. Um, but we had other friends who did actually end up having worlds, and so one of the things we did to avoid um, dealing with our friend who's plagiarizing, mostly Rose, because she thought Rose was real cool, but she also didn't like Rose at all. Um, we, all we stopped sort of talking about worlds as much at, at recess, unless she wasn't around, and we started writing about what was happening in our worlds in world letters. Yeah, so I teased I wasn't always this fancy. 2010, when I started my worlds, when I was first starting taking my writing seriously, I was basically writing cringy self-insert fanfic. And it wasn't technically fanfic, but I stole like half my characters and all of my plot lines, and I barely changed the names of any of the characters. So how did I get good at writing? How did my writing evolve from cringy middle school fanfic to landing me a job? Um, world letters started out by being in first person, but they eventually evolved. I mean, they've always been in first person, but they eventually evolved to stop being like letters that our characters wrote in their downtime in between adventures. Mm -hmm. And they started being like first person YA novels, but written in very small chunks. And I really think that's because of the person whose character is named Wolf Lily. Um, she took a break from World Letters, and then she came back and she started writing basically a novel in first person, and we were all like, that's so cool! And so the epistolary stuff went out the window. That's not a good thing, though. They were all bad. They weren't necessarily bad. Yeah, they were. <laughs> well... They were just long. They were long. So long. Um, like, you, like, they were single space most of the time, and you could put them into a Word document, and they would be like four pages long. Single it's, space. It's true. I think the biggest one was it was like 20. That there was like 20 characters added in one letter because it was like a big banquet or like ball thing. But like, and that's when I said, okay, you can only write a page and you can only, I think it was like three. I think it maxed you out. Of Don't worry, Rose. That's writing advice that I've also been given by actual writing professionals, so it's okay. <laughs> I've become a better writer because of this limitation. Uh, when middle school hit, which was a little bit after 2010 for me, I was really starting to do research into writing craft and structure after reading The Wizard's Test by Hilary Bell. At the time, it was the first book I had read which was explicitly how there weren't good guys or bad guys. It was just sort of like the right book at the right time. You know, I wouldn't claim that it's necessarily like the pinnacle of high literature, but it was just a really solidly written book, and for me, it was perfect at the time. So I looked up Hillary Bell afterwards, and she had all this writing advice on her website. And honestly, that's how I learned to structure my plots, how to write stories with any amount of forward momentum at all. Uh, this doesn't say that all my friends took it super seriously. First world was just a super cool gal who went on adventures and just did cool things and learned cool magic and there was never a point or um, like an overarching <laughs> goal. Your mom <laughs> reversed the entire timeline back to when you were 10. And, yeah. And then it went forward again to re-meet it. Mm -hmm. And last time you picked spell and shape, but this time you picked spell and potion. Yeah. Um, this also went along with, I, and I don't even know if you know this, but I had a, I had written a spell book. I didn't know spells. this. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are so bad. Oh. Um, they are so funny. Um, like, I can only remember some of the shape spells, but it was like if you wanted to turn into, like, a dog, you'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like, dog goes bark, dog goes wolf. Dog, like, dogs play fetch, and I am one or something, like, it was something like that. 
But that was like all of the shape shifting spell structure. But honestly, the more influential thing for me was having people read my work and validate that it was worthwhile. And I loved being able to do that for their worlds and their ideas too. So even when I wasn't good, I didn't care and I just kept writing. <laughs> Incidentally, unlike most people I know, I didn't do any of my work online, so you can't find it. I did it all in email with my friends. Dear hero from an alternative universe, greetings from Iberia the third. I am called Kaku Raigan Atzival, the life bringer, but you can just call me Kaku. I am a genuine, a dragon link, and a ring kinser, someone who can connect with the rest of the universe. As a member of the IRA, International Writers Association, I lost my memory at age 13, but I found my parents as a gift for saving a light spirit. It turns out I am part elf, part human, part a kayar, a sort of half human, half dog like species, small muscular build with sharp teeth and claws, part wolf, part tree spirit, part mermaid, and I think that's it. I will send you another letter if I remember more. I wrote these world letters all throughout high school and then throughout college. I was sending them about once a week up until I started actually making games or dolls or doing social media or playing D&D in more of my spare time. <laughs> I have too many hobbies. But honestly, having a variety of hobbies is good for you, so I don't regret slowing down on them. And I just wrote until I sucked less at writing. I researched constantly, I listened to all sorts of YouTube videos about writing for games and television and novels. I watched so, so, so many videos on languages history, ecology, business, mythology, and I got feedback as much as I could. I'm especially happy with the help that some of my professors gave me. Um, but I'm also very lucky. I'm just one of those people who love the act of writing, not just having had written something. And I've always had the support of my parents, both emotionally and financially, as well as my friends. Growing up, is we'd have like world sleepovers where we would dress up as our characters and like, not really pretend to be our characters, but do like vaguely world adjacent things. Like we would play Minecraft, but it was our world. Yeah. But not really. It would just be like. I think vaguely. we would also have in character conversations. We'd have some we in character like conversations. Yeah, we would role play. If stuff, but... you're an amateur writer looking to become a professional writer, or if you're looking to be a creative of any kind generally, I just want to take this moment real quick to remind you that even if your writing sucks right now, even if you can't express things the way that you wish you could yet, you can't get good by not doing it. If it brings you joy, you gotta make time for it. So like, just do it. Uh, also though, if you're neurodivergent and you can't just do it, uh, just remind yourself that you don't have to create the way that other people tell you to. Or you don't have to sit down, you don't have to open a Word document, I mean, unless it helps you. You could write in Discord if you find it, sending Discord messages to yourself is easier than sitting in a Word document. So find ways to be creative that work for you. Doing it in an unorthodox manner is better than just not doing it. And if you're scared that it'll be bad, remember that something that exists but is bad can be improved. And something that doesn't exist will just never get any better. Hey, we're gonna talk about something very near and dear to my art. Heart. And also art. Or <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> just like restart. Because <laughs> I just restart because I figured we're just gonna roll on with it, cut it later. Yeah. Just fix it in post. Yeah. All this to say is that your passion, even if you're writing something super cringy and bad like I was when I was young, can turn you into something professional. So let that passion carry you through the journey, through the awkward, ugly stages. And don't be afraid of them. That's just, unfortunately, that's how it goes. You can make it out to the other side if you keep going. And if your goal isn't to go pro or even to improve, that's also valid. So you should show the world's, your own world's, unashamedly. It's worth it. At least that's what I'm doing, and it probably sounds cheesy, but I put everything into my worlds because I want my world to touch your heart. So please be excited to see what I can do. Thank you.